Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mitrovich, the Alternate Historian. Let me paint a picture for you. It's the middle of World War II, months before the attack on Pearl Harbor. It's not clear yet whether the Axis powers will be defeated, but some are already imagining a future for the victorious allies. In steps the outline of post-war New World Map, also known as the Gomberg Map, after its alleged creator, Maurice Gomberg. I say alleged because very little is known about Gomberg. From what I've been able to gather, he immigrated to Philadelphia from Eastern Europe and was originally a clock or watchmaker. He had no formal education and was sympathetic to the Communist Party, but was apparently not a member. He likely completed his map sometime in October 1941, but didn't publish it until February 25, 1942. Some copies ended up in magazines or were bought by the public, and you can still find copies in the Library of Congress. The map itself outlines the political divisions of the world after an Allied victory in World War II. The world would be divided into 14 independent states, 13 of which would be democracies, and 11 of which would be demilitarized. Many of these proposed states would be multinational unions made up of pre-existing states and colonies. The three major powers who would cooperatively govern the world would be the United States, the United Kingdom, or the British Commonwealth of Nations as is known on the Gomberg map, and the Soviet Union. The US and the UK would also have access to peace security bases in and around Africa. There were also three quarantine nations, specifically Germany, Japan, and Italy who would presumably be occupied until they were ready to rejoin the community of nations. Based on the map, Germany was supposed to join the Soviet Union, while Italy would join the United States of Europe. It's not clear what Gomberg had planned for Japan, but my guess is he meant for them to be independent. Some other points to make about the map includes the Republic of Ireland, attaining the entire island of Ireland, the African superstate being called the Union of African Republics instead of the United States of Africa, I guess Gomberg only wanted one country with the acronym USA, and Hebrew land, which appears to be a Jewish majority state like our timelines Israel, except it is much larger since it includes all of modern day Israel, Palestine, and Jordan, plus parts of Saudi Arabia and Syria. Finally. Gomberg also included a manifesto with the map that laid out how his New World Moral Order would be created in 41 points. He also quoted from President Franklin Roosevelt's For Freedom speech. Reading this, you get the sense of just how much of an idealist Gomberg was. His proposal attempts to combine the democracy and freedoms enshrined in Western civilization with the better parts of the communist system. For example, the three superpowers would keep the peace and protect individual liberties while ensuring that all natural resources were equitably divided among the world's population. I guess it shouldn't come as a shock to you, dear viewer, to hear that I find Gomberg to be naively optimistic. Gomberg really didn't foresee how the ideological divides between the United States and the Soviet Union could lead to the Cold War and a race to create the largest collection of superweapons. Gomberg also couldn't envision how bloody decolonization could become as European colonial empires tried to hold on to their overseas possessions by any means, or how the arbitrary borders given to the new independent African states would lead to further conflicts down the road. Even the idea of a united Ireland seems laughable today. Still, to Gomberg's credit, hindsight is 2020, and he did get a few things right. Organizations like the European Union, NAFTA, the African Union, and the Union of South American Nations do tend to correlate with the proposed multinational unions that Gomberg envisioned. Even the thought of a Jewish majority state in Palestine in 1942 must have seemed ridiculous to many then, yet today one exists. Sadly, right-wing fearmongers have equated Gomberg's map with the New World Order conspiracies, which is incredibly unfair to Gomberg. In my humble opinion, Gomberg should be remembered as a pioneer in alternate cartography, and not as a boogeyman of the tinfoil brigade. He was the type of person you see today on the internet creating maps about potential futures or alternate pasts. He didn't have Photoshop or Inkscape, but he did have enthusiasm and the motivation to publish his vision of a better world out to the public, and I can respect that. Perhaps alternate history's community of map makers wouldn't exist today without someone like Gomberg making the effort to get his art out there. Well that is all I have to say in the subject. If you like what I do, please comment, subscribe, share this video, or support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrovich, the Alternate Historian. Bye!